Next up, we're going to another presentation that's from Pat Carthy, and it is the 1990 through to 2009 montage in Te out of the book uh, available to you, 100 Years of Auckland Rugby League, which was just released this year. Pat Carthy with another look at the history of the ARL. Thanks very much, Dale. We're now in the uh, final quarter, and at this time I'd like to personally uh, acknowledge a few people. My colleagues on the Centennial Committee, fantastic job, great, uh, fascinating journey over the last two years. Thank you very much. To Barry Holland, Gary Whittle and Graham Lowe for giving their time to record the voiceovers that have told you some of the exciting story in Auckland. To Gordy Gibbons, who's not here today, he's busy in the UK with a certain game being played tomorrow. And a special thanks to David Blackwell for making it all happen in, in conjunction with the great team from Mirage. Thank you very much, David. I would also like to acknowledge and thank our life members and former Kiwis that are here tonight. Great to see you guys. Thank you. And finally, while there's many people behind the scenes that have gone in to make tonight and our centennial happen, there is one person I would personally like to acknowledge. He's a very good friend of mine. We've worked closely. He's known me for three years, oh, since I was three years of age, to be fair. And uh, all the way through, you probably recognise the quote, to be fair, and that's Peter Leach, QSM, the Mad Butcher. Thank you very much, Peter. We now move on to the 90s. The book's chapter titles for the 90s is headed The Nervous 90s and starts out with the story subtitle Decade of Constant Drama. It's fair to say there was drama and it's fair to say it was a busy decade. There's no doubt the rugby league was changing and the game having to face up to differing economic and social challenges. Two key issues stand out in the 90s. The first after initial foray by the Mount Albert Club was the successful 1992 acceptance of the Auckland Warriors into the Winfield Cup from 1995, and who forget the opening March night just out here. The second was the introduction of the Lion Red Cup in 1994. The Lion Red Cup, while it brought much needed national competition to the New Zealand game, it did not gain the support of the grassroots, and club and traditional forms of representative football did suffer. By 1996, the two key flagships of the game, the Lion Red Cup and the Warriors, were in financial trouble, and rugby league as a game had been upended by the Super League War. By the end of that year, the Lion Red Cup had been signed to the history books, and the Auckland Rugby League board were facing up to the reality that their continued ownership of the Warriors, despite the golden apple of Super League, was crippling ink financially. The decision was made to sell. While the board had grappled with this decision for many months, the club supported the recommendation and the club was sold to private interests. A positive benefit for the game was not only to replenish the reserves, and I have to admit during that time the bank manager and I were great friends every week, but it also enabled us to develop Cornwall Park and the fa fantastic facility that we have there and the fact that it had been 20 years on the drawing board. It made it happen. While much of 96 and 97 was spent addressing issues associated with the Warriors and Lion Red Cup, it did enable the board to begin address addressing the revitalisation of the Fox Memorial and its premiership competitions. The 90s had seen many formats and the Auckland game needed deserved consistency. As a result, the concept of Focus 2000 was adopted, which over the next two years saw the board and the clubs work very closely together to ensure that we had a stable competition format that would not be greatly impacted by any national competition that may come in. The result, apart from a few minor adjustments, has seen a stable premiership format that is still with us today. Off-field, much of the 90s also the board facing up to the cold realities that the grand old lady, Carlaw Park, was in serious need of redevelopment. It had lost test match status for the big games and despite numerous development concepts, the death knell was effectively administered when the Warriors announced that they would be making Mount Smart their home ground. While this decision effectively signalled the final blow, an earlier board decision to convert the number two ground 
a car or park gave much to a car park gave much needed revenue and in part ensured that the board did not have to rush any commercial decision on the future. As the decade grew to the end, the park hosted its final test match against Tonga in 1999. The 90s were diverse, that's for real, busy and it had its ups and downs. While the grassroots game, though, still continued to sow resilience. The new premier structure resulting from Focus 2000 was allowing more clubs the opportunity to contest for the Fox. This saw the rise of clubs like Papakura, Hibiscus Coast and Otara, to name a few. The decision also showed much needed stability when in 2000 the Barter Card Cup was launched. Of the eight Auckland participants, six were standalone clubs and two joint clubs an endeavour by the national administrators to build on the traditional rivalries that were missing from the old Lion Red Cup format. At the same time, words such as planning, business plans, KPIs and budgets became more common in our vocabulary and the board took on a more structured and professional business approach, setting medium and long-term business goals and football development strategies.